Good day to you. Welcome to the Google Data Studio. Understand data and create simple report training video. So I am Dr. Chin. You may call me CKO. I am a lecturer from University of Malaysia Sabah. In this video, I'm going to share with you on how to access Google Data Studio, how to add data source, how to create simple report. This is the example of report that we are going to create today in this video. It is an interactive report that will display data when you move your cursor mouse cursor to the chart how can we access to google data studio it is very simple just open the browser and type the following url address datastudio.google.com Please make sure you have first logged in to your Google account. So in this data studio interface, it provides three sections, reports, data source, and explorer. Reports section store all of the reports you have created. And it also provides templates if you want to use the templates. Data source will store all of the data files that you have connected successfully. For this video, we will need a data source file. I already prepared a data source file for you. Please go to the following URL and download the data source file. Open your browser and insert the following URL. Click enter. So this is the data source file that I share with you in order to create the report. This data source file consists of order date, region, sales representative name, items, units sold, cost per unit, and the total, total sales. Please click download button, download the file, and then re-upload it to your Google Drive. So I already downloaded that file. I'm not going to do it again. In your Google Drive, please make sure sampledata.csv is available. So back to the datastudio.google.com's website. Click the Create button. Click Data Source. So for the first time we use it, the system will prompt for terms and conditions. You just click get started. And then I have knowledge. Make sure that it is checked. Accept. And then tick no, no, no thanks to the tips, comment, products, market research offered to the Googles. All right. And then click the button done. So again, go back to create data source. Now we select Google Sheet. So we click authorize. And then it will locked. So from here, I already uploaded the sample data to my Google Drive. So it listed here. Click on this name. And then click the button connect from here. So you will found that actually the Google Data Studios already fetched the data and then sorted all of these fields. If you compare to the file, the original file, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven columns. 
but in Google Data Studios, we have one more column, record count. For this one, just accept that it is. All right. So the Google Data Studios will automatically detect the field and then we determine the type. If you found that the type is wrong, please select and change. Okay, for item is a name, so it's text. Okay, correct. For the order date is date, correct. Regions, sales representative are both text. Auto is number, unit cost number, unit is also number. So these are same. Okay, so move to here, create a report, click the buttons, but before that, go to here. It shows you data credential is owner, data refresher 50 minutes. So you can change when you want to update the data. Every 4 hours, every 12 hours, or default 50 minutes. And then you can set the community visualizations access to on or off. And then the field editing is in reports as on or off. Okay. And then you also can make a copy of this data source. Or you want to add a field. So let's click the create report button. You will be prompted with this dialog box. You are about to add a data to this report. Just click Add to Report. Alright, so by default, Google Data Studio already created a small table with you for you with regions and then the record count. So this is the report area and these are the videos area All right so you can modify the data in a table or in a graph using all of these features the formatting is over here under style and then from here you can save the report so change the untitled report to sales report and this will actually save the whole report in your Google Drive from the left to the right there are buttons over here with add a patch this means one report one patch you will have more than one patch if you want to do that this is undo and redo buttons. This is the selection mode. This is add chart. You will find that actually Google already prepared quite a number of charts for you. We will look at these later on. Then community visualizations and components. Okay, all of these community visualizations too are still in a beta version. So it's up to you if you want to use them and then you can set that range filter control data control url embed if you want to put it into your report include the image include the tags include the line or arrow include any shapes for rectangle and circle Add the data, adjust the theme and the layout. So at first, you must understand what do you want from your data. This is very, very important. Again, even though the Google Data Studio is intelligence tools that can help us fastens the process of creating graph but you must understand what do you want from the data I have prepared a number of questions in order to create 
a simple report. So I want to know which region has the highest sales, and I will use pie chart. And then how many stationaries have been sold on a daily basis? I will use line chart to represent it. What is the total sum of sales with the number? And then what are the total products sold using bar chart? Who are the region's top sales representative using a tree map? And then how many items sold by each cell representative using a stacked bar chart? So for you, if you are having a data and you don't know which chart to be used or which graph to be used, it's okay, it's fine. Just leave it first. But you have to list out the possible questions that you want to answer using the chart. It's very important. Back to the data studio, we found that by default data studio has created a table for us and it consists of regions and record counts. Basically we can adjust these tables based on the dimensions and the metrics given here. Let's resize the table so we can add more metrics. What is the matrix and dimensions? Matrix means the field that have been calculated, such as we include the total. These totals means total cells by regions. We add a matrix for units, how many units have been sold by regions. We also can add representative so it shows that how many representative in these three regions do we really need to show this table in a report that's the question for us we don't need it because we need to show we need to answer the questions by using graph all right so back to the questions the first questions we have is which region has the highest cell? So I assume that we will be using a pie chart to show it. So go for here. Click add, select a pie chart. And then place it somewhere. All right, you will see that Google is smart. Google Data Studio is smart. It already create a pie chart for you based on regions okay so we adjust a little bit on the style okay, from the style part we found that actually we can resize it based on the slices if it is needed we can change the color dimension color or using a single color slice order or dimension value. The dimension values means we can adjust the inner size of the pie chart so that it looks like a donut chart. And then we can adjust the level whether we want to show the percentage or we want to show the level or we want to show the value in this case we show percentage also we can add a background color and a border let's add a border click the black color all right that's all for the style i i want so for this chart if you want to add a title, okay, there is no way for us to add a title from the data and from the style. Alright, so what should you do is we use the text box here, click it, and then we drag it somewhere. So let's 
name it as percentage of sales by region so now we have a title we have the pie chart and I want to remove this table as I said we don't need it actually because in the report normally we can show more charts rather than a data okay, so I just click right click and select delete right then I will move my pie chart to the left side by selecting both the title and the pie chart of course we can group them by clicking the title shift click your keyboard shift key and then click the pie chart right click choose group or the other way select both title and the chart right click click group so now when you want to move one items the title will be following right first chart done one second the second chart we need we need to answer the questions how many stationery have been sold on a daily basis let's add a chart a line chart to the report by default Google Data Studio already create this line chart for you we're referring to the region dimensions and the matrix you see is record count this means from this graph this is how we describe it for the center regions we have about 24 records in the database for east regions we have about 13 records in the data set but this is not what we want we want to answer the questions how many stationery have been sold on a daily basis the first term used is stationery the second terms we found is daily basis so since daily basis involved we better to change it the dimension I mean we better change it to order date so back to the graph you will found that the x exit now changed to the date all right i want to see by items so add another dimension refer to the items so now this refer to daily basis and stationary sold but how about the graph inside back to the matrix if you found that actually it shows the record count but the question asks for how many stationary have been sold so back to the matrix side click it and then replace it with units the units here represents how many units have been sold so click it you will find the graph look like this all right so let's change a little bit the style of the graph click the style and then go to the border we create the border for that select border click black color so now we have the border color eventually you can change the legends positions by clicking the style find the legends so you can decide where you want the legends to be bottoms right no legends or on top of it Right, second graph 
created successfully. So for this graph, we can have a name for that. Click the tags. Let's include a name. Items sold on daily basis. But now this chart have been fully utilized for the line chart and the legend. There is no place for us to put a title in it. So it's quite inconvenience for us in this case. Alright, so how can we put this title in the box? There is no way but you have to remove the boulder. Go back to the chart boulder. You set it to transparent or maybe no boulder. Alright, resize the graph. Make it a little bit small. And then click shape. Select rectangle. Then click the area so that it can cover the whole chart. And then make sure the background color is transparent. And then we create a border color. So this is how we set it. But don't forget when you create a rectangle, basically it is on top of the graph. Alright. So you have to right click and go to the order, click send to back. Alright. Now you can resize the graph, resize the chart so that it fits in the report. Alright. So go to view. Let's try click to the view buttons. This is how a report looks like. Alright. So basically when user move around the cursors on the report. They can see all of this data. Okay, by 9 of February 2019, 36 pencils have been sold. So there are three buttons over here. Okay, you can click and then sort the graph by using units or order that. Let's try order that. This means 2019 is here, 2020 is here, the latest date. Right. So now the category by date or sorted by date. Okay. We have answered the second question. Now go for the third question. What is the total sum of cells? And we will represent it using a number. All right. Go to the add a chart features. There is a function called scorecard. So this is what I want to show you that we can use these to show the total number of the cells. So you can select either one scorecard or scorecard with compact numbers. Click and place it somewhere. All right, by default, Google Data Studio shows you units is 2000 plus this is not sales this is the units sold but the question requests for total sum of sales so he is referring to the amount which is referring to total so click the matrix and change it so it shows you that this is the total 
cells from your data. Next, we are going to answer question number four. What are the total products sold using a bar chart? So back to the Google Data Studio page. Insert a bar chart. Any of the bar chart. Just click the one, click and drag. Well, it already show you the result. See, from here, it shows you the dimension is items. We want to know the items, binder, pencils, and so on, and then how many metrics we have, how many units we have for each of the items. So you get a chart within one second, all right? But there is a legend over here that I don't think we really need it. So we go to the stand and then scroll down, go to the legend. We select none, none legend. Right. So again, insert a title for this items sold total items sold All right we adjust and align the text to the center it's not really center Right, next we add a rectangle to the chart. So same case, adjust the color, background color to transparent and then create a border, select color border, then right click and set it to the back. Right, then we can adjust the height of the chart select them select them the three items and then we group them but how can we select everything okay, never mind we move it a bit down then we select again group it so now we have the third chart all right, so it seems like we don't have enough spaces for that. We're going to move a little bit up for these total cells. Okay, we adjust the size of the chart so that we fit three charts in one row. Oh, I haven't grouped it. The group, resize the chart. Yep, done. Next, we are going to answer question number five. Who are the region's top sales representative using a tree map? So go back to the Google Data Studios, click on tree maps, drag it and leave it here. All right, by default, it gives you a dimension of regions and then record count. The question requests for regions top sales representative this means we need to add another dimensions which is referring to the sales rep sales representative all right so this shows you the results this is the center area this is the east area this is the west area but the matrix we use here is record count the record count here means 
how many order they have placed. It is not about the top cells. Top cells represents your number of cells. So from here again, we change it to total, which is referring to the amount. All right. Now it show, it shows the changes. Okay. If you're not sure about it, go to the view. Okay, now place your mouse, your cursor on top of it. You will see that oh, parents sold 3000 plus, Jones achieved 2003, Howard achieved 500 plus. All right, so we have answered the questions, and then again, we have to add a title for this. Region top cells representative. All right, cells are a region base top cells representative. Okay, done. Again, include another rectangle as a border. Alright, change the background color to transparent. And then select the border. Adjust the height of the border. And the width. Alright, done. Select the three items, right click, group them. Okay, next, go to the last question. How many items sold by each cell's representatives using a stacked bar chart? So again, we're referring to cell's representative and the number of items sold. So go to add chart. We will be using stacked bar. You can choose either the column chart or the bar chart. All right, let's choose one stacked column chart. Drag and put it here. We wait it to load. Okay, so immediately it shows you that the cells representative names are here, but this is not we want. We want to see the items sold. So from here, this is not date order. This is supposed to be items. All right, great. So this chart shows you that how many binders have been sold, how many pencils have been sold, and so on by unit by unit so again add a title for the chart items sold by sales representative all right line it center a bit and then add another rectangle as a border change the background color to transparent then create the border color right click order send to the back and then group them or before group them I just a little bit the graph Okay, again, select them. Right click, order, send back, sorry. 
Again, select them, right click, group them. So done. Now you can adjust a little bit the size of the graph if you want. Then item sold by self representative. Total of items sold, items sold on a daily basis. And the percentages of sales by regions, region based top sales representative, top sales for each representative. So, what if I want to change it? So, ungroup, okay, select the title. How come I can ungroup? This one sent to the back. So region based top cells for each cells representative. All right. Again, select all of the items. Right click, group them. All right. Slightly adjust the title. So ungroup it. And then select all items again. Group them again. Okay. We will be inserting a title for the whole report. Annual report for company A, for an example, and then resize the fonts to 40 probably Ooh. to 40. Where is 40? 40. All right. And then adjust a little bit. So done. Click the view button. Now you have completed. We have completed the thread report. And all of these reports, basically all of these graphs, are considered interact interactive graph, where you can sort them. And then they will show the value to you. All right. In the next video, we will be focusing on create simple chart and how to use the filtering functions for the chart. All right, that's all from me. So I hope this video is fruitful for you. Thank you very much for watching my video.